Hi, Gabor. Gabor, <laughs> it's nice to meet with you. Thank you for taking the time. You're going to be presenting at our conference March 10th, 2022 in San Diego at the Learning from Psychedelic Assisted Psychotherapy. Um, your background is, is amazing, as everyone knows. And I was just looking at some bios and uh, you've worked in palliative care, end of life issues, addiction, trauma, mindfulness, compassion. In 2020, you did a, a, a tape called The Power of Connection. Um, all these things seem to be integrated uh, into psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. Um, you know, the role of treating trauma uh, and the importance of connection, all of these issues that you've been living in your professional and personal life seem to come together with psychedelics and assisted psychotherapy. Is that the case? Yes. Now, the one thing I'll have to clarify is I'm not a mindfulness teacher or even much of a practitioner, so you can take that off the list. Okay. Um, but you are into connection. Well, it's not that I'm into connection. It's that connection is the reality of life. And uh, mm -hmm. as human beings, we're wired for connection actually and the denial of connection is one of the sources of trauma so um in psychedelic work for example um some people can have deep experiences sitting by themselves you know under the influence of some substance but therapeutically speaking connection is absolutely necessary uh people have to feel safe they have to um, experience themselves as being listened to, as validated, as understood. And um, without that, the psychedelic modalities not only don't work, they can even do some damage. So how do you see psychedelics being used for trauma? Well, that depends on one's understanding of trauma, and 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 trauma really is the um, impacts of, of of painful experiences that we haven't had the opportunity to work through. So they they show up in our lives, and very often they show up uh, unconsciously. That the dynamics <clears throat> that drive human behavior are very often trauma based, but they're not very mm, conscious. So why I might get upset? in my marriage for this side or the other often has nothing to do with what I think I'm upset about. It really has to do with some traumatic wound, some deeper dynamic. Now what psychedelics do is they, and you know, of course they all do it differently, but what they can do is remove the, the veil of belief and automatic reactivity that covers our traumatic imprints. So that under the psychedelic experience, influence and in the presence of connection, people can actually experience the, the pain that's underneath all that. And they can experience it, they can grieve it, and they can do so with safety and with compassion for themselves. In other words, they can work it through. So that's one aspect of the psychedelic healing experience. And with psychedelic assisted psychotherapy, um, do you see people being less reactive, more emotionally integrated and healing the trauma? What, what, what comes out of those sessions, if it's a good session, and most of them are? Well, <clears throat> again, um, my work with psychedelics really went beyond psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. Um, in fact, psychotherapy wasn't the original intent of why I began to work with psychedelic. It was, it was, it was an implied intent. It was much more connecting people to themselves and helping people find their true selves. And, and that includes working through the trauma and all that. So psychedelic is just a psychotherapy. It's kind of a clinical Western medical way of formulating it. That's what we have to do in North America in order to get research funding and, 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 and do the research. And, and of course, that's been a great uh, contribution. But really, um, we have to look at the work with psychedelics is far beyond just 
I'm going to do psychotherapy with you and here's a psychedelic that'll help me do it or help you participate in it. So it's a much broader uh, approach, at least the way I like to think about it, than simply um, uh, psychotherapy, um, which leads me to remember that I forgot your question. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> this tell us says we're in an altered state of consciousness anyway. So yeah, so yeah, well, that's a good way of formulating it. So it's really about expanding consciousness, and consciousness means expanding it not only in sort of some vague, vague broad spiritual sense, but also deepening it so that you actually get conscious of what's inside you and what's been driving you and what's been yeah. block blocking you for that matter. And that goes way beyond just a question of psychotherapy. Um, yeah. Again, for research purposes and getting access to people with post-traumatic stress disorder, for example, or end-of-life anxiety, these are this is where the studies have largely been done. Um, it, it, you have to formulate it in, in clinical terms, but really it's far beyond that. Yeah. In fact, you know, the when you look at the studies, from Johns Hopkins on psilocybin mushrooms and end of life anxiety. <clears throat> People had spiritual experiences and that what was, that's what they found most transformative. So you use the word blocking and certainly trauma uh, blocks um, successful relationships uh, in many ways. Um, so the use of psychedelics, not only in therapy, but as a, mind-altering um, experience to unblock and see things from a different perspective that we're, we're so habitual, we're so wired to see things a particular way. And I know when I did psychedelics, it's been a number of years since the 70s, yeah. um, it was mind-expanding because I could look at things differently and not take them so seriously. Yeah. Well, so the word psychedelic itself, as you're probably aware, um, was coined by a British psychiatrist working in Canada called Humphrey Osford, I think his name was. And he took the Greek words, psyche for soul or mind, and delic, which is to manifest. And so psychedelic actually means mind manifesting. So it actually manifests what you're, what you're carrying inside. Let me switch a little bit. Uh, I, I, this might be preemptive, but what do you think you're going to be talking about at the conference? This and what else? You think I plan my talks that far? No, I don't. <laughs> you think I plan them even five minutes? You know, just, <laughs> look, what I'll be talking about, listen, this is a confidence in psychedelics. So, I mean, I, I can be a bit less facetiously. I could respond by telling you that I'm not a researcher. So there'll be uh, Bessel van der Kolk there. And he's, you know, rightfully so, he's, he's a leading researcher in the mental health field. And he's more recently, as he told me, because there's funding for it, you have to, you know, you, you can only do research what he has funding for. So you get funding for psychedelics, thanks to the, thanks to MAPS and, and you know, the rig, big rock Dublin and his work. So there's more research funds available. But I'm not a researcher. In fact, not, not only am I, am I not a researcher, I only have a limited interest in research. And the reason I say that is because um, I already know it works. I don't need a stitch of research to tell me that this stuff works. I mean, I've seen it, you know, and that may sound shockingly unscientific, but I happen to believe my eyes, you know. And uh, I've been working with psychedelics for about a dozen years now. Um, I've seen what, it, what they can do in terms of helping people heal from addictions, from mental health conditions, from physical health conditions, or beyond that, finding themselves, finding purpose in life, finding a new relationship to their relationships. So I'll be talking about largely my experience and my insights and my observations. That's what I'll be talking about, um, including my own personal experiences uh, wow. with the psychedelics. So. Um, I'll leave the scientific stuff to to the others, and I'll just talk more subjectively. But I think that's just as important as the um, as the uh, research material. And I think that's uh, kind of a nice segue into the conference because I think a lot of people 
are very interested in what you have to say personally and your perception. Uh, I, I have a background in the addictions field, and I'm really interested to hear um, your experience with psychedelics and addiction, yeah. Yeah. and and the controversy because of you know our history with Timothy Leary and Ram Dass or Richard Alpert at the time That's that right. we overindulged in in using psychedelics. Well, Did you say that or well, certainly psychedelics got a bad name in the late 60s and the early 70s for good reason is that um it became a bit like um the sources apprentice phenomenon when people started using modalities that they didn't have the skill or the depth or the training or the maturity to really handle so there was damage done to people you know and and, and that's what i'm talking about the importance of we all talk about the importance of the set and the setting you know, right the, the context has to be right and in the 60s people use it anarchically and you know there were you know rarely but every once in a while some young guy would jump off a building because they under under the impact of lsd because they, they thought they could fly you know that's harmful and uh <clears throat> larry um rather blithely um you know turn on Tune in and drop out. Yeah. Uh, it's a good it's a good slogan. Um but there's something nihilistic about it. And um there wasn't the context. So now that along with a political decision made under the Nixon administration to demonize psychedelics, demonize the young generation who used it because of their opposition to the Vietnam War. So that, you know, the, the demonization of psychedelic wasn't just a cautious response to some of the excesses of psychedelic advocates. It was also very much a political opportunistic action. Um, but yeah, psychedelics used irresponsibly. Um, the person under the influence of psychedelics is very vulnerable. They are in an altered state, very influenceable, um very um prone to um be unbalanced if the ground is not secure and so the bad reputation that psychedelics gained was somewhat earned although it was the right response wasn't to forbid them or to discourage their use but to figure out how to use them properly and unfortunately, that took decades for us to get back to. Yeah, and, it's, and uh, as you mentioned earlier in the research, they're really being very careful having two guides in the therapeutic uh, psychedelic assisted psychotherapy and uh, for fear of sexual violation, a male and female. Yeah, that, 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 that specifically in the MDMA program. Right. You know, this is a kind of love drug. Yeah. I've worked with many other substances, I've worked with MDMA. I've also worked with a lot of ayahuasca, sometimes with mushrooms, occasionally with LSD. Um, so the protocol is not the same, depending on, you know, ayahuasca, for example, is not a question of a psychotherapic setting, it's a ceremony that, that, that involves uh, shamans. So what I'm hearing is it's not only the psychedelic assisted psychotherapy, which is now being called a breakthrough therapy, yeah. because it's less costly, it's less involved, it takes less time to recover from. If you compare it to electroconvulsive therapy with uh, treatment resistant depression, it's far better a, a modality. Um, and you know, I also hear you saying that, well, individuals will be exploring their own growth uh, using psychedelics as well. And we need to be careful uh, not to overemphasize, just take it and turn on and tune out, but really be in the now more and look at what your goal is and the set and setting. Yeah, so one of the modalities that I developed, um, I mean, in my own practice, that is um, that, for example, my first work was with ayahuasca, actually. Right. And <clears throat> so I thought, well, how about if before we go into that ceremony with a group of 12 people or 20 people, everybody had an intention. 
that would serve as their anchor, mm -hmm. not not as a rigid um, um, kind, of, kind of a purpose chain. But as yeah. an yeah. what am I trying to find out? What am I trying to learn? What would I ask? What would I ask the plan to teach me during these six, seven hours that we're going to spend under its influence? So intention setting, and then afterwards processing because. People that have experiences, but they don't necessarily understand. Right. You know, once they come back to their, what you might call ordinary consciousness, that ordinary consciousness is not very geared to understanding what the experience was necessarily. So then people help need, need help understanding and, and integrating their experience, integrating them into their lives so that it's not just a one-off beautiful or painful memory, but something that carries a teaching that one takes into light so that's integration so all these all you know th these these are all lessons that i had to learn in my work with psychedelics yeah and integration is uh, a key word in in uh, psychedelic assisted psychotherapy uh, how do you yeah. make sense of what actually happened and, you... and not putting on to the other person your expectation it's more their intention or their goal yeah that's, that's right well i i, I want to thank you for uh this brief interview, and I don't want to take up any more of your time, and I don't want you to talk more because I want people to come to the conference and hear more from you. So, well, and you were going to also have a, a question and answer hour uh, yeah. at the conference as well, which should be very interesting. So, thank you again. I look forward to it. And now to tell you that I just finished writing my next book. Oh, great. It's, it's, it took me 10 years, well, two and a half years of writing every day for the last two and a half years. It's painful, I isn't it? Huh? Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> we'll talk about the pain of labor giving birth. But yeah, yeah. The reason I mention it is because actually have a, a, one of the last chapters, the third to last chapter, is on uh, is on my experience of healing with psychedelics. Excellent. Excellent. We'll hear more about that at the conference. Yeah. And what's the title of the book? It's called The Myth of Normal, Trauma, Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture.